Welcome to Su Vida. I'm your host, Vanessa Ramirez. Today, we're visiting the Arizona Museum of Natural History in downtown Mesa. It's home to many exhibits that we can't wait to show you. Plus, we have some amazing stories to share with you today on Su Vida. Joining us now is Allison Staltman, the Deputy Director here at the Arizona Museum of Natural History. Thank you for inviting us out today. Thank you so much for coming. Okay, Allison, so what can visitors expect when they come here to the Arizona Museum of Natural History? Well, we are affectionately known as the Dinosaur Museum because we have lots of fossils and these amazing prehistoric beasts around me. But there's lots more here. There's something for everyone. We have cultural galleries, geology galleries. You can pan for gold, explore an old mine or you can take a selfie with a dinosaur. Oh my gosh, what is your favorite part of the museum? Well, my favorite part of the museum is actually that we are an active research institution and not a lot of people realize that. We have paleontology and anthropology uh, departments and that is reflected in our galleries. We have lots of collections, including some first of a kind uh, fossils and dinosaurs that we actually have in the background here. You have a new exhibit opening in fall. Tell us about it. That's right, we're so excited about that. So we've been working in close collaboration with the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian community and Gila River Indian community to create an exhibit that talks about how people lived here, survived, adapted, and thrived since time before this was even a desert. Mm. And they're still here today. Okay, so one of the cool things here at the museum is that you're bilingual. Some areas have both English and Spanish labels. Talk more about that. That's correct. So 30% of our local population do identify as Hispanic or Latino, with Spanish being predominantly the, the, the primary language in many of those households. So not only do the Spanish labels actually open up and make that information more accessible to more of our own community, but it also celebrates our multicultural community we live in. I'm sure a lot of people want to come and experience the museum for themselves, so what ticket options do you have available? Well, all our options are great value for money, but we have a family pack that's $50 for two adults and up to four children. So that's great, $50 to entertain a family of six. Yeah. We also have group booking options for groups of 10 or more, and you must uh, book them in advance. Uh, membership is a really great way to not only get great deal, uh, great value for money, but also it supports the museum. All of that revenue comes right back to the museum and goes into educational programming, exhibits, our research, and then exciting news, what? We are bringing birthday parties here to the museum. So there are three different packages. So check it all out on our website or follow us on social media. Perfect, well it sounds like you guys have a lot of exciting things going on here at the museum. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. Thank you for coming. All right, we have a lot more to check out, but we'll be back with more Suvida right after this. Suvida is brought to you by Sands Chevrolet. Sands is the one. And Chicanos por la Causa. We are CPLC. This is the Dinosaur Hall here at the Arizona Museum of Natural History. Okay, you can't ride these dinosaurs, but later this month at the Arizona Black Rodeo, you can watch the pros bull ride, the youngins mutton busting, and so much more. Check it out. There's a unmatched feeling between a horse and a man as far as just being connected. It's just really special. I'm born and raised in Texas, moved here to Arizona back in 2021, and then I had a cousin that was here who told me to come talk to a cowboy out here named Shahid, and he invited me out, and from that point it was all she wrote. I haven't left since. <laughs> Being here, um, everybody was asking, are you going to the rodeo, are you going to the rodeo? I'm from Texas, but I've never been to a rodeo. So that first night that I went, I was hooked. I said, this, this might be a problem. I've never seen anything like this. So the 
Cowboys, they really love Arizona. Chris German is one of our upcoming uh, bull riders, and I think he's so excited to ride uh, and participate in the upcoming rodeos in Arizona. But Chris has uh, really made a difference even here at the ranch because I think he's inspiring other younger people, especially his son, um, to kind of get into the, the actual rodeo world. He wants to do it, he works hard, and he's a really good guy. So we want to make sure that we provide a platform for people like Chris to live out their dreams. My relationship with Lynette is amazing. She moves like she's just everybody else in the crowd, and that's what honestly makes her and the show, The Black Rodeo, amazing. Once you visit an Arizona Black Rodeo, it's undeniable that um, it's a talent that we possess as well. I think we kind of have not been exposed the way we should have in the past, um, even going back to the Western, the Wild Wild West. And we want to make sure that we have some representation um, with African Americans as well. But to see that we sparked the interest in the younger generation to keep and continue generations and generations rodeoing, then that we've done our job. The Arizona Black Rodeo, it's an experience. And I think for most people, um, they haven't seen it before. And they literally are excited when they see uh, horses. And then when they see a black cowboy, that really boosts the excitement. So um, I think it's just a wonderful time for everyone. All right, make sure you get your tickets early for the Arizona Black Rodeo. It's going to be held August 30th and 31st here at Westworld in Scottsdale, Arizona. We'll have three shows, three exciting shows, um, one on Friday night and two on Saturday. So again, get your tickets early and it will be a sellout show. You can find us online and on social at Black Rodeo USA. When you join Us Travels Online Academy, you join a strong and supportive learning community. You'll make meaningful connections and you'll receive personalized instruction and support. I think about one of our students who stands out to me specifically. This was a student who had some physical medical challenges and she was telling me about her online learning experience. And one of the things that she said to me that I'll never forget is that none of my classmates here know that I'm in a wheelchair. No one knows my struggles and I still have friends and I still chat with people. I am treated like everyone else in this environment. She's just one of many students who feel at home, welcome, and part of a community at Ostravo that are challenged to feel that way in a traditional brick and mortar environment. The great thing about Ostravo is we work with students as young as kindergarten all the way through the graduation of high school, all the way through 12th grade. Statewide tuition-free program that all families in the state uh, should consider us. Ostravo Online Academy is a purpose-built online school, and I stress that because it's very different from what a lot of our families experienced. I think a lot of families are realizing that online learning is a viable option for them that never really thought about it before the pandemic. A lot more parents are working from home. So this barrier of needing a place for a student to be physically during the day is going away as more and more organizations, more and more companies are allowing more flexibility with their employees to be able to work from home. So uh, for a lot of reasons, Estrava was experiencing a lot of growth and we're really excited by that. You know, I'm a parent of three myself and what works for my oldest child does not necessarily work for my youngest when it comes to education. So it's incumbent upon me, like it's incumbent upon all parents to investigate all forms of education, to understand what what works, what doesn't for each individual child. So I say frequently that our program isn't the right program for every student, but it can be the right program for any student. We offer a personalized program. It's unique to the individual student. Some students may be accelerated in one area, they may need a little more time in another area. As a purpose-built online program, Astravo can cater to the individual needs of any student. Astrava brings two critical benefits that a lot of families need right now. One is flexibility. So if a student needs to work during the day in order to support their family, or maybe they're a semi-professional athlete and they need the flexibility to not necessarily be in the same four walls of a building every day, Astravo can meet that need. We also have an incredibly broad course catalog. So if a student is interested in healthcare or maybe coding or gaming, those subjects that motivate students to be able to want to do school are of primary importance to us. So of course we cover 
all academic rigor levels of things like math and English and social studies, but we also offer a wide range of electives. The best place to learn about us is online. We would love to learn more about you. Heart-stopping, breathtaking, simply ravishing. We're describing Arizona Opera's new season featuring La Boheme, Aida, and the Arizona premiere of the adventure opera, Zorro. For information and tickets, azopera.org. If you're looking for the best night out, we have you covered. We're going to start off with the Plato Delicioso, and we're heading to Mariscos a Todo Mar, where Chef Jorge is bringing the best of Sinaloa-style mariscos to the valley. Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Jorge Antonio. I am chef and owner of Mariscos a Todo Mar here in the beautiful city of Phoenix, Arizona. I'm originally from Sinaloa, Mexico, the birthplace of mariscos, and we're bringing all those delicious flavors to your palate every visit. Today, I wanna make for you a delicious red spicy aguachile. Come join me. All right, folks, today we're gonna to be making our very popular and spicy red aguachile. Uh, it's very important that we use very fresh seafood that we actually get imported. For instance, this octopus here, we get it from Sonora. We get our beautiful shrimp imported from Sinaloa and our scallop, our callo de hacha, which is the king of seafood there. We get it imported from Sonora. It's very important to utilize really fresh seafood in order to, to have a, a very balanced overall dish. These here are the spices we're actually gonna be utilizing for our sauce that we're gonna be making. As I mentioned, it's gonna be a spicy dish, but we also wanna balance it out with some crispy vegetables. We got the chitapin, we have the chile de arro, we have the sea salt, we have the, the coarse uh, peppercorn there. And lastly, we're gonna be utilizing um, some citrus to give it a nice cure for our shrimp. We go through four different types of citruses to give it a good balance. We have the orange, we have the, the yellow lemon, we have the key lime, which is the sour component, and then we have that Persian lime as well. So I'm excited to get this ready for you folks. Follow me into the kitchen. All right, so we got our beautiful shrimp here that we've already deveined, cleaned, washed. We're gonna throw it in there with some delicious citrus that we've already squeezed and uh, the key component here is we don't want the shrimp to be swimming in the juices for too long because we want to keep it as fresh as possible and here we're just tossing some crispy red onion some beautiful cucumbers a little bit of that tomato and this dish here definitely takes me back to just growing up in Sinaloa this is something that it was my to go anytime I found myself around uh, fresh seafood and we're gonna throw some delicious octopus right on top of it all. Fresh scallop. And we are almost to the finish line, folks. Give it a nice little stir. And lastly, we're just gonna season it up a little bit. All right, there you have it, folks. Our delicious red aguachile, ready to be enjoyed. And nothing goes better with it than this delicious, refreshing, made-to-order lemonade that we make here in-house. So refreshing, perfect with this aguachile. Thank you so much for allowing me to cook for you today. And be sure to visit us here in the beautiful city of Phoenix, Arizona. Mmm, so delicious. So when we're done eating, we're heading to Orpheum Theater for a show or a tour. Check out Historic Orpheum Theater as part of our Arizona Legacy Series. The Orpheum Theater first opened on January 5th, back in 1929. This building was the last major construction project in Phoenix before the Great Depression. When this theater opened, like 95 years ago, it, it was a technical marvel. Um, I mean, when you walk into this theater, you're taken back to a time that was inspired by the Spanish uh, Revival period. It's like an outdoor, atmospheric theater when you walk into the, the main bowl. It really harkens back to an old time of how people were entertained um, back in the day. And uh, it was unique to this area because uh, there were no other theaters like that here. You know, you walk in, you're blown away by the red seats in the theater. 
But um, the detail in other parts of the theater is something else that's incredible here. It's very ornate. You see the, the details that harken back to a lot of inspiration um, from that time. The ceiling here in this theater, it actually transforms you. Uh, you know, you can see the colors of a sunset above you. And then also you can see like the starry night that you can experience. We have a staircase, we call it the Peacock Staircase. And uh, it's something that you don't really see or experience anywhere else in the valley. So when this theater first, first opened back in 1929, it was a vaudeville theater. But then as vaudeville started to, to lose its luster, if you will, uh, they found other ways to, to bring people into this theater for, to be entertained, and it became a movie house. They still had some vaudeville acts, but it really brought some diversity to the experiences that people could have here in the theater. I think that's what really kept it top of mind to people. Back then, I mean, Phoenix was a lot smaller than it is today. I mean, we're the fifth largest city in the country, but back then there were only 48,000 people here. But, and for the theater to find ways to keep people engaged really helped elevate the, the status. This theater is the, the only performance venue in Phoenix that's on the National Registry of Historic Places. So that's significant. It's a point of pride for the city of Phoenix. You know, Phoenix, especially downtown Phoenix, really prides itself on the cultural experiences. And I have to say that the Orpheum Theater uh, really is the benchmark for those experiences because of the history that it has and the connection to the past. You know, it's very important uh, when you're talking about a large city uh, to have those connections to the past because that really reminds you of what the foundation was for this city and it gives you something to build off of as the city continues to grow. Today, the theater's role is to really add to the cultural experiences in downtown. It's owned by the City of Phoenix and managed by the Phoenix Convention Center and Venues. And on the Convention Center side, we really pride ourselves in exposing people to the energy um, of downtown Phoenix, especially those people that are coming in from, from out of town, but also the people that live here. And adding to that cultural vibrancy is one of the key points of this theater today. So we have stage performances, plays, uh, dance performances, uh, comedians. Uh, when the city, as an organization, um, had the opportunity to purchase this facility, the main goal was to make sure that this building is restored into its original state. Our team here um, is so forward-thinking that they found a way to bring in modern technology into this theater so that you can have an experience that is both you know, atmospherically like it was back in the day, but technologically, it takes you forward into the future. I mean, I would put this theater up against any other theater in the Valley when it comes to the type of experience you can have. My favorite experience here in this theater, probably the time that I got to get a tour uh, behind the scenes of this theater. I mean, I knew a little bit about the history, but what I wasn't aware of was all the people, all the talent that has been in this theater. We have like, a, I call it a wall of fame, where we have uh, pictures and autographs of all the different talent that have come through these doors and performed for people. And walking through that corridor, not only do you feel like you're walking back in time, but you, you, I can also imagine not only the audience's reactions and seeing some of these people here, but the reaction of that talent when they stepped onto that stage. There's no other feeling like it. So I highly encourage people to come and, and get a piece of that experience. Arizona Legacy is brought to you by Cummings Plumbing, Mercedes-Benz of Gilbert, and Sweet James Accident Attorneys. Hey, don't go away. We'll be back with more Sevilla right after this. Suvida is brought to you by Sands Chevrolet. Sands is the one. And Chicanos por la Causa. We are CPLC. Welcome back to Suvida. I'm Vanessa Ramirez. Another great place to bring the family is Chicanos por la Causa's Community Center. With many wonderful enrichment activities, it's a place to find family empowerment. I am the mother of three kiddos and they've been coming to the Chicanos Community Center for five, six years now. I grew up in this neighborhood, went to Car Hidden myself, and have been coming here and having the kids come for all these years now. The 12-year-old has obviously been coming the longest. He really enjoyed the STEM activities and the nine-year-old, the arts, the painting. She completely loves all of that 
and the six-year-old was just dying to be old enough to start coming. So now that she's old enough, she's just soaking it all in. They come to the center and they can go outside and shoot hoops or be on the playground, but also just to have a place to decompress and have people that are keen to their needs. The most valuable aspect that I see here is the sense of belonging to something, a place where you can identify yourself with the staff, the culture here, the values. For me, that was really important, especially with my children as minorities. They are growing up in a space where they're not necessarily feeling like a minority, but also working on ways to empower them to be comfortable in their own skin so that when they're in other spaces that they are still having a strong sense of themselves, their identity, and pride of where they come from, and the people that look like them and have similar values. Looking ahead and our continued involvement at the center, I would love for us to find more time to be here and to give back as much as we've received because when you have people that care and they run this place with their heart and you see a lot of people willing to make meals and come and help with the garden or help clean up the center and just that sense of pride because it is something that everybody's pitching in to help. And I want them to start learning that you need to be part of solutions and just take care of what we've built together. Because this community center has been in the community for over 25 years, it's really cool to see the circle of services. So for example, we've had parents that are now using our services by enrolling their own youth into our after school program or maybe our summer camp program because they used to come to the community center and they have fond memories and positive experiences. We have grandparents that live in the neighborhood and are volunteers and that's how they connected uh, their grandchildren to us. And it's just been a really great way to see how the whole child, whole family approach has impacted these families through generations. That's all the time we have for today. We want to thank the Arizona Museum of Natural History for having us out. This is such a great place and you can even have birthday parties here. So make sure you come check it out in downtown Mesa. We'll see you next time on Su Vida.